It's your boy Glenn coming to you for the win. Yep. Today, I'm going to share a story with y'all about my time in Dubai and Thailand. Now, I'm going to be a hundred thousand million percent up front with y'all. I've told this story already on the With the Windows channel. So y'all getting ready to see that. But now that I have this channel, it's going to be on this channel. So y'all be ready to sit tight, grab your popcorn, grab your licorice, grab your candy, grab your soda, grab your slushies. Because this story time is a doozy. Yet egg. Story time! Alright you guys, so this dates back to about 20, probably 2016. Me and one of my uh, co-workers slash homeboys, we decided that we wanted to go to Dubai because the company we worked for was going to stop flying there. So what we decided to do is like, let's catch one of these last flights over to Dubai before the time is up and we don't have an opportunity to go there anymore, right? So this is what happened. We gathered our little pennies up because we were still very new to the company. Stuck a little bit and was like, all right, bet, let's go. We flew out to Atlanta, which is where the, the flight to Dubai originates. And we were just out there chilling. We barely made it onto the flight, y'all. It was like racing to the gate and hoping and praying that we actually get on this flight. We, we made it. We got out there to Dubai. Can't believe it, y'all. We out here. I'm doing big things. I'm 20... Two, 23 years old. I remember at that time, I'm 23 years old. Let's go with that. And me and a homie, we out there in Dubai, living large, right? We had a great time. We went out. Uh, the hotel we stayed in had a rooftop, uh, a rooftop uh, club. You call it a club. It was a rooftop club. So we up there, and well, before we went up there, we down in the room and getting dressed and stuff. I'm wearing, you know, clothes from US. My boy decides to get some clothes that dresses like the culture out there. I was like, bro, I don't know if you should do that. We are not on familiar territory. You know? he'll, get, he'll get this nigga, he'll get his ass jumped or something. <laughs> he'll get his ass jumped in the club tonight. <laughs> you know, I don't know if this is a sign of disrespectful or anything like that, but you know, it's all good. He decides to put it on, he puts the whole thing on, the headgear and the whole wrap, you know what I'm saying? Wearing this tonight, I just tried it on. It's fresh as fuck, though. Fresh as shit, though. Look at this, dude. <laughs> and then he goes up there, and lo and behold, <laughs> the first thing they say was like, "You you can't come in here with the with the hat on." Like no one in there was allowed to have the hat on. And obviously, I didn't know why. I don't know if he didn't know why, but you know, I it's their culture. It's you know, their religion, their rules, all that stuff, whatever one that it is. I didn't question him. I was like, bro, go back and take that off. You know, so he went back and take it off. We resumed the night. Great chill night. We stayed in Dubai for about three days. Burj Khalifa saw that. I saw the waterworks show uh, down at the fountain. We took some pictures. I probably will insert a picture here. I don't know if my boy wants to be on this film or not, so I'm gonna make sure I censor out his face, but you guys can see me. So the next day, we only spent about two or three days there. So later on, um, you no, know, we spent a couple days, and then the next day is probably the third day there. I was like, bro, I'm trying to go to Abu Dhabi to check out Ferrari World. Now, if y'all know me. Y'all know I'm huge on roller coasters. It's supposed to have the world's fastest roller coaster, which is why I was intrigued in the first place. And so I was like, bro, you trying to come? He was like, nah, I'm still here to try to get whatever, whatever, whatever. I was like, bet. So I caught a bus, a train, and a taxi <laughs> all the way from Dubai to Abu Dhabi from the port to Ferrari World. I didn't know how long it was gonna take. It took a good three hours to get there. I ran through all the rides so fast because it wasn't as big as I thought it was gonna be. But I got on Formula Rasa, which is the name of, I hope I pronounced that right, which is the name of the world's fastest roller coaster. And it's dope, like they give you goggles. They give us goggles, it goes so fast, baby, let's do this. They give you 
uh, like warnings and everything before you sit on there and you sit there and take off. Although the ride itself wasn't super spectacular, that initial takeoff where it was like, doo, 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 that thing was like, whoa! And I understand why they give you the goggles. And I would say, if you ever have an opportunity to go to Abu Dhabi, feel free to get on that ride. So the ride was dope. I got to do it. I'm about to cut the line because the security dude. I'm about to get on again. It's just, it's dope. Check out the man. Big time. Boom. Like, for real, that was dope. Now, honestly, that was the main part and reason for me going to Abu Dhabi. So, like, I'm out there having a good time. Just me going around a whole foreign country, a whole foreign city by myself, just enjoying life and enjoying the culture and talking to people. You gangster, you gotta be my Snapchat. You gangster, she's gangster, y'all. She's gangster. <laughs> um, because I, I wanna commend every other place that I've been through, uh, that I've been to that's not the United States because someone there always speaks English. And that kind of makes me feel sad and disappointed about our culture because we don't know, not all of us, but most of us don't know other people's languages. We don't, we just don't know it. But everywhere that I've gone, they speak their language, they speak English, and they speak something else. So we gotta do better. Now we come back and then I just like, thought to myself like, bro, I've never been to Thailand. Let's go. Everyone in the U.S. goes to sleep. We gonna hop on a flight from Dubai over to Thailand. And we flew on Emirates, y'all. So they got that A380 plane, the upper deck and the lower deck. If you've never flown on Emirates, definitely give it a shot. Uh, they have the cameras on top, on bottom, and in front. So if you ever want to know what it looks like when your pilots are taking off, get on one of those planes, just look at the camera and you can see it as it's takeoff and, that it, and as it's landing. Bomb. And you can see below you, and you can see what's going on on top of you if you if there's anything going on on top of you while you're in the air. Uh, but it was an A380 plane. The flight attendants and all of them were so nice enough that they, uh, after the flight, they were able to take us up to the top so we could look at it. They could see the showers and that open bar and just the way the seating arrangements were. And I was just like, that's one of the dopest experiences of the trip. You know, got to go to Dubai, and then next I got to see the freaking top of the A380 on an Emirates plane. And it was just simply amazing. So we land in Thailand. I'm lit, we're in Bangkok. You know, I, at this time, knew nothing about traveling. I'm still new to this job. I'm still trying to figure out my, my, my bearings. I knew nothing about traveling. I knew nothing about Thailand. I, all I knew was that it was a place that people go to have fun. And I knew that it was considerably cheap compared to the US. So I'm like, bet, let's go. Get off the plane, catch a taxi, head all the way down to wherever part we was at. I don't even know, cause I was letting him control all that information. We ended up in like the slum area. Uh, cause once again, you know, it was about having fun and finding the woman for my boy. So we end up there, we go to a couple clubs, it's all good. And I'm like, bruh, I'm looking at some of these people I was like, these these girls look like dudes, you know? And then I'm like, uh, yeah, bro, I'm cool. I mean, I, and I don't think he, he, you know, had any fun with any of the dude girls, but it's just way too many of them that are out there. So if y'all ever go out there looking for fun like that, y'all need to be careful because there's a lot of dude girls out there, okay? So we out there having a good time. Mind you, this is our first night. We just landed there and we just going out. <sighs> Once we leave two or three of the little clubs that we went to, because it, you know things weren't popping like we thought it would be, we've decided to uh, just walk around for a bit, just to get the culture. Now, we were hungry, naturally. We we're hungry, we've been flying all day, we went out, et cetera, et cetera. So we're walking around and getting street food. I wasn't hungry, um, because I think I stopped at like a little store or something, they got something, but he was still hungry. So there were street vendors lined up, just like if we were in downtown LA at the little taco trucks. You know, there's street vendors who's, you know, making kebabs and things like that on the side of the street. Now, ain't nothing wrong with this, right? Now, if you've ever been to Thailand, you know their currency is the bot, B-A-H-T, it's the bot. Um, so I think they're selling it for like nine or 10 bots. Um, and my boy was like, yo, can, let me get it lower. Let me get it lower. 
And so, you know, at this time, I'm, I'm oblivious to what the currency exchange is. So I'm just like, I'm just standing there. He's like, let me get it lower. Let me get it lower. The guy was like, no, no, no. He like, he already had the food on the grill and all that stuff. They're like, nah. And then my boy started talking down, let me get it lower. Let me get it lower. The dude was like, nah, man. So he was like, you got, you can go. You know, he didn't, you know, in their language, but he was like, no, blah, 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 you can go. You know what I'm saying? And then my boy was like, he was like, man, you already got the food on the grill. Just give it to me. You know, goes up there, flicks the dude on the neck. And that's when all hell broke loose. Bruh, what are you doing? We are in foreign territory. It's just me and you. And they got a line full of street vendors. That's what I said in my mind. And also, that's what I said when I was cussing them out after the fact. <laughs> but this is what happened. As soon as he flicked that dude in the neck, the whole line of street vendors erupted. They rose up and they was just pounding him with chairs and tables. Like repeatedly, they was throwing chairs, throwing tables. Someone was holding chairs, holding tables. <laughs> Pounding them, pounding them, pounding them. And I was like, bro, if I don't do nothing, this dude's gonna die. And it's only me and him in Thailand. They gonna kill him, they gonna come after me. I'm like, whoa. So of course, I'm like, I'm not about to let my boy die. I'm jumping in, not to fight, not to fight, but to break it up, to, to push him away. But while I'm in the middle, I'm trying like, no, stop. He didn't mean it, no, stop. Don't hurt him, no, stop, don't hurt us. They're pounding me with chairs and tables and chairs and tables and chairs and tables. I don't know if you guys can even see it, but like there's this line scar right here and there's some in the back, which is why this ball spot can't grow any hair back here. Because I got pounded in the head, in the side, in the ribs, everywhere with chairs and tables, blood everywhere. Like, no joke. So I'm like, I finally pushed him back and we walk away. I'm freaking limping. This dude, he, he got some scars and bruises too, but I was like, why do I look worse than you? And I wasn't even the one who instigated this. I wasn't even the one who started this. I wasn't even the one trying to get no kebab for nine bot, which I looked up the currency, the currency exchange for moments later. And I found out that nine Thai bots is equal to 27 US cents. Really, bruh? 27 cents. 27 cents. Like, what? You bargaining down 27 cents? Are you kidding me? I just got jumped for 27 cents. Wow. Get back to the hotel, pissed off. Like, bro, are you serious? Are you serious? Like going off on him, dude. And then he's like, man, I know it's my fault. I know I apologize, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's cool. Like, I forgive the boy, you know what I'm saying? I forgive my boy. I don't know if he was like fake being mad or being mad, mad, but he, go, he, he wants to go back out there. And I'm like, bro, no, don't go back out there. For one, I'm not going with you. For two, you're the one that had the problem with. Don't go back out there. Like, you just stay here. We need to find a way to heal. We need to find a way to recover. And then we need to just get on out of here. So I'm I'm getting a shower trying to just clean off the stuff. Bloody gash. I, I don't know if you guys can even see it, but this right here. This bloody gash was open. Gash in the back. I'm just trying to like shower off, recover, you know, all that stuff. And, and, and then boom, next thing you know, he's gone. And at that point, I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going back out there. I'm a shower. I'm a rest. And I'm just looking for the first flight out back to LA. It's like I told my sister and I told my cousin, I told them, do not tell my mom. Because I know how my mom would act. I didn't want my mom to like start crying and have like a, uh, you know, a little mental breakdown because her son just got pulmerized in Thailand. So anyway, I'm looking up flights. The next flight doesn't leave for another 24 hours. So I'm sitting in this hotel basically the next day. I didn't go out. Gashes, my nose was bloody, my lip was busted. I'm gonna try to see if I have any pictures or videos from that time. Cause I wasn't sharing that on any of my social media. Like I'm sharing everything from the trip on Snapchat. Boom, all of a sudden it just stops. And you see why. Cause your boy got beat down. Quick update, you know, it's starting to heal a little bit. Well, the white ends is neosporin for my gashes deep in my head. And so finally flew back to LA. Soon as I land, 
Then I had my mom pick me up, showed her, told the stories. We went straight to the hospital. And because it was a 24 hours over, I had to basically just let it heal by itself. So I, it was too late to get stitches. And, you know, they just gave me some cream to, to put on my head. And, and you know, that's a, it's 24 hours plus the long flight over from Thailand. First of all, I had to go from Thailand to Narita, then Narita to LA to go to my doctor. You know, so that's a long period of time since the incident happened. So there was like, it's too late to do stitches. You basically just gotta let it heal on its own. You guys, this was the story of when I went to Dubai and Thailand and got beat up and got jumped. And it wasn't even my fault, Jeez. For those of you who have made it this far in the story, I'm glad you stayed tuned to hear the whole thing and you know that it was really crazy, right? Like I'm literally left with scars and bruises from that trip, but it's crazy. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, you guys. Subscribe, turn on those post notifications, hit that like button, share this video. Let's grow together. You guys are now officially deemed as my travel crew. That's what it is. You guys are now my travel crew. All you guys who are supporting and have subscribed to me, that's what it is right now. So I definitely love all you guys, my travel crew. So let's get it. I have to let y'all know that you have reached Glenn. Holla back at me again. Peace.